This week we went to go see The Beekeeper in IMAX, that's right, in IMAX, but is it any good? We'll talk. Hi, how are you doing today? It's just Jess here, hope you're having a good day, and today, yes, yeah, so we got the movie The Beekeeper, and we went to go see it in IMAX, but is it worth it in that format? Honestly, that entirely depends on you, so I would choose maybe. I don't think it's filmed or shot in IMAX. I cannot find hard evidence like I do normally on this review channel with various sources and interviews that it was shot or filmed for IMAX. I did experience black bars. Now, for those of you that are wondering, what are black bars? It's these that I'm doing right now on the screen for you. I did experience that, so usually, if the movie is filmed for IMAX, you will get the expanded aspect ratio. So you don't get it here. You don't get the expanded aspect ratio. However, you still get to experience a proprietary sound that provides powerful in-depth audio experience and IMAX still feels the best way to watch it and have fun. Jason Statham's Beekeeper is an action adventure with feels like dumb comedy movie releasing this January. A lot of critics are giving this a low score, which let's be honest, don't always listen to those critics. Don't always listen to those mean critics. It is dumb, but it's dumb in a good way. It's a funny way. It's a comedy hand-to-hand -hand gun sequences with shooting sequences, killings, blows, nice combat movie for its January release. Because a lot of people in Hollywood, well, in Hollywood generally, usually dumps dumpster movies in January, like Night Swim, which wasn't really that good. But still, remember last year's Megan? Yeah, totally different techniques. But still, sometimes January movies can actually be very good. This movie, you'll like it if you like other movies such as John Wick or Kill Bill Volume 1. We meet Jason Statham's character, Mr. Clay, as the beekeeper, as there are a lot of metaphors, similes, and hives to protecting and producing and killing the effective offspring and also protecting the hive, killing the beehive, killing the queen bee. What starts off as a simple man harvesting bees, working every day, working day to day, making honey, quickly results in him taking down a corporation that they have stolen, scammed, and ruined people's lives. He feels like an everyday man. Anyone can see themselves in him, just doing what he does, working the bees, making money off the bees, getting honey, but secretly has a private program inside of him. Josh Hutcherson is in this movie, but plays a different role than what I'm used to seeing him i usually see him and being the good guy like hunger games or the recently five nights at freddy's however he does fit that perspective of the evil guy so he basically plays this evil guy who's involved in cryptocurrency money laundering scheming two-faced sons of b-i-t-c-h backstabbing people in like online that doesn't know anything about it which is cool for him as an actor as he gets to flex his chops and venture out into different roles and he does actually fit that evil guy at first when i saw him like no no i didn't want him to be the evil guy but he does fit that nicely and like i said it does fit into the combat dumb scenario that this movie's kind of going for although i know the movie's trying to be serious but i feel like as the audience we had a lot of fun because we were laughing at multiple points at the movie there is a lot of hand-to-hand -hand combat combat sequences gruesome killing effects that literally had me and my theater jump in our seats to be like oh my gosh because sometimes like say he stabs someone in like the throat or like he's doing a stapler thing we were like just jumping because it's fun dumb comedy but so i know the movie's trying to be serious like who who, who is this person who you work for who you work for we gotta protect the hive we gotta protect the hive quill the king bees quill to the fat bees and that's the way he talks and i'm sorry i'm not doing a good impression but it's definitely no john wick in terms of the gruesome effects however if you do like mission impossible or james bond you'll absolutely like this because it's still in a similar realm in terms of like the fight sequences the action sequences however if you're a fan of those franchise you'll like this but it won't be to that extent because the storyline especially for this it literally just feels tacked on the action sequences the comedy the jokes it what feels first and foremost in the forefront of of the movie and then the rest of course there is a storyline someone did him wrong someone did his family wrong a friend so he's now he's trying to get revenge taking down this corporation and literally we're in 2024 so the fact that cryptocurrency money laundering online scheming two-faced sons of b-i-t-c-h's are real and prevalent i literally get scam likely calls from t-mobile that tell they tell me they're scams. i literally click on the, the red button i'm like nope not today not today if they leave a voice message i don't even listen to it so it's prevalent today but still there is one scene that i really have to talk about they're trying to get this guy from new york and the cia agents or the military is literally on the perimeter and they're like trying to find the best way to go in and he literally comes out mr clay jason saying the character literally in the front of the street in broad daylight wearing regular day clothes he literally goes up to them he's like if it was the back way i would have tried it and they literally look at him like he's crazy like who is this guy we have to detain this guy and i had my feet are laughing multiple points because that whole scene was so funny he's like and they're like do you have some history sir and he's like no but we need to take them out and then they're like who are you and he literally says i'm mr clay and they don't believe him they don't believe him. they're like someone detain this lunatic and the whole fun action sequences dumb fun comedy was prevalent especially in that scene and that continued on the whole movie of course a reference to the bees the fact that he loves bees that's what i'm saying he loves bees 
And the way that he's incorporated into his gun sequences, hand-to-hand -hand combat is amazing. And of course, the storyline, yes, it's weaved in, but still, it does take some nice twists and turns. However, at the end of the day, I'm gonna give this a B plus, and we saw this in IMAX, so your mileage may vary. Very short review here today, guys, but because I don't I don't want to ruin it. I mean, it's fun, dumb comedy, good action sequences. If you haven't seen Jason Statham in an action movie, then see this one in theaters. It's actually fun, but it's fun in a good way. There's some great comedy, and the action is pretty good for anyone to like. If you made it this far, I appreciate Appreciate you so much. Maybe consider hitting that like button and turning on notifications so you never miss a video. With that, take care. Bye.